what inspired the quest to help panic sufferers. It started at Pan Am. We had a course on fear of flying. At the end of the course, we had a graduation flight, and the leader of the course had told the participants that if they used breathing exercises, that would control their feelings. But on the graduation flight, people were doing their breathing exercises exactly as we taught them, and they were having a full-blown panic attack, some of them. It, it felt really awful to be helpless to do anything about their condition. What, he, what, he, what we had told them would work just didn't work. And that has been the case since then for many of the treatments of panic. And finally, when I worked with uh, my own program on Fear of Flying, after many years of stumbling around, found a way to stop panic in the air at least 80% of the time. So when I took notice of how inadequate the therapies for treating panic on the ground have been, for example, CBT, is only able to stop the panic in 17% of the cases of people treated by it. And we're running 80% in the air, a much more difficult situation. So that's why I wrote the book, Panic Free. We can stop panic very successfully. The main thing is it works. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the most commonly used therapy but it requires people to do something at a time when they're overwhelmed. As one person said, if you ask my name in the middle of a panic attack, I couldn't tell you. Other people who are therapists offer breathing exercises, and it's true that when you breathe out, you do get some relaxation, maybe not enough to do much for a panic attack, but it's all gone when you breathe back in. So what's been offered and the public has been told that it should work is, is really very ineffective and hardly works at all. But this method, because it's something we developed at 30,000 feet, working in a really difficult situation and worked at it for years, finally stumbled on something that worked, is now something we can offer people for their problems with panic on the ground as well. To understand more about how this method works, think about your car. You've got an accelerator pedal that revs the engine up and speeds the car up. You've got a brake pedal that slows the car down. We have what's called the sympathetic nervous system that when stress hormones are released, it revs us up like the accelerator pedal revs up your car. There's no problem with that area of our emotional regulations. We know how to get revved up. It's the slowing down, the calming down, the braking system that is not working well. And panic can only happen when this braking system is not working right. So what we do is we train the parasympathetic nervous system to operate automatically by programming the unconscious procedural memory that works even under stress. When we get stressed, we don't think clearly. So we can't depend on our conscious mind to step in and take care of us when we're in panic because we're just too revved up. But we can use this other part of the brain called unconscious procedural memory. That's the part of the brain used by first responders. They, when they're under great stress in a life and death situation, they don't think clearly either. So how do they do that job? What they do is they're trained ahead of doing the job to automatically follow certain procedures, step one, step two, step three, such as whatever the steps are to deal with dealing with a fire or uh, an emergency situation in an emergency room. In other words, although we might say a person might rise to the occasion, what happens in, in real life is we descend to the, to the level of our training. So we want to train your unconscious procedural memory to step in and automatically do what's necessary to release oxytocin to keep you from getting revved up and activate the calming system to override any stress hormones which you might get. Nature has it set up that when we produce oxytocin we can't produce stress hormones. So we can take a situation where you produced oxytocin 
naturally. Then we can look at a situation you have trouble with, such as an MRI. And then we can take the MRI situation, break it down into steps, such as making an appointment, block, link that to a time when you produce oxytocin. Then we take another step, going to the office to get the MRI, and so on. We link each of these steps to a memory of a time when you produced oxytocin, so that as you are engaged in this activity, getting an MRI, throughout that process, you're producing oxytocin, which blocks the release of stress hormones and keeps you from getting revved up, makes it impossible to have a panic attack. That panic can be stopped. It's done by automatic control. We can train unconscious procedural memory to step in and stop panic before it can even get started. Music